Hi, we're at the FEMS conference on microbiology and I'm joined by Natasha Golic. Thank you for letting us interview you. Uh, Natasha, you're affiliated to the Host Microbe Interaction Group, Laboratory for Molecular Microbiology, Institute of Molecular Genetics and Genetic Engineering in Belgrade. And you've done research on a microbiome and showing how antibiotics impact the microbiome negatively. Certain diseases can be aggravated because of it and also how probiotics can help. My first question that I would like to ask you is where did things go wrong? Was it when we started farming or when we had the industrial revolution? Could you tell something about that? Yes, uh, actually, uh, what is known today uh, that uh, uh, we have some uh, different way of living, and uh, we eat more uh, ready-to-use food. Uh, it's uh, industrially prepared food, full of preservatives and chemicals, and it's uh, quite different than we used to eat traditional food, full of uh, probiotic bacteria. For example, artisanal cheeses or artisanal meat sausages and uh, cabbage, uh, sour cabbage, for example, they are full of probiotic bacteria. And uh, used to people uh, take uh, took more that kind of food and they were much healthier. But today we eat more uh, ready to use food uh, full of uh, chemicals. And also uh, the antibiotics uh, are not uh, so well regulated and uh, people can take it uh, without some strict regulations and is uh, particularly if, if it happens early in life uh, up to five years in childhood for example then uh, immune system cannot uh, evolve uh, properly and then uh, we face autoimmune diseases but people that uh, live uh, still in in some uh, healthy area in uh, villages that uh, still eat traditional food they uh, live a much longer life uh, and uh, much much healthier life and uh, in our studies we actually showed uh, what is that uh, in that food that is important for for health and for long living for example we found bacteria that influence uh, longevity and that uh, can prolong uh, life and stop uh, aging process not stop but uh, reduce the aging process actually so yeah. That's that's uh, very interesting, yes, in, uh, in our studies. Absolutely, absolutely. And this uh, research you did in uh, C. elegans, um, so it's, it, it is uh, an animal uh, that you did research in, but it is not uh, higher in the hierarchy like mice or uh, monkey men. So how would you say this would translate to... Um, when you would get to the point that it's usable for treatment, for instance, what steps are to be taken? Yeah, actually, uh, C. elegans is a really well-established model system, animal model system for aging studies because they have short life. Uh, all other animals, particularly mice or rats, they uh, live longer and then it's much uh, more difficult to follow and uh, the experiments are much longer. Uh, to study aging processes. So that's why C. elegans is important uh, as, as model system for that kind of studies. And uh, uh, it's well established and uh, in literature data, uh, the, the data that are uh, obtained in that uh, model system are uh, taken as uh, re re relative uh, for, for that kind of uh, things. So for us, it was more important to reveal what kind of mechanisms uh, staying behind. And uh, we found that uh, autophagy, particularly lipophagy, uh, is a, a process that is uh, in, involved in, uh, in uh, anti-aging, uh, actually, anti-aging pro properties of these bacteria. Okay, okay, thanks a lot. And I also would like to know a bit about the research on EPS and uh, pain inflammatory uh, hyperalgesia. The findings of this uh, research, can it be seen also as uh, results of, um, or can it also be applied to other uh, pain uh, issues or is it a specific inflammatory pain? Yeah, it's actually an uh, property of this bacteria because uh, this bacteria, uh, this EPS uh, has a particular and specific uh, uh, immunomodulatory properties and uh, it reacts as an uh, immunosuppressor and uh, that's why we uh, use the inflammatory pain uh, as model system for studying of anti-inflammatory properties. 
I don't know for other paints uh, if it will be relevant. Okay, okay. I, I must say I've looked with, with interest to this uh, interview because I think many of us can relate to uh, the issues of modern life and um, the, the consequences it has for your gut. I was also interested about the gut-brain axis uh, and particularly I've seen a uh, book release some time ago uh, about uh, ADHD diet. I'm not sure if you're uh, aware of the um, publication, but um, it describes how diet can um, relieve symptoms of ADHD. And in your presentation, you mentioned also other conditions uh, in that brain gut uh, access. So would you say there's, there's also um, for instance, uh, ASS uh, diet thinkable or um, other uh, brain-related diseases, uh, can they also be helped, treated or cured by uh, diet? Yes, definitely, yes. According to literature data and according to our results, we now can say that uh, microbiota is strongly involved in the gut microbiota uh, brain axis. Uh, particularly, it's shown that some gut bacteria uh, it's uh, so-called next generation bacteria and uh, those uh, anaerobic bacteria living in our gut now are studying more uh, to be cultivated and uh, more studied. Uh, they are still not well known. Some of them are studied and characterized, but most of them still are not. But for some of them, it was shown that they uh, produce uh, some uh, mo molecules, some small molecules, uh, bioactive molecules that are involved in a gut-brain axis. Uh, particularly GABA or Shochen fatty acids. But also what is interesting is that, for example, Turisibacter, one of the new bacteria found in our gut, uh, is also involved in uh, transport of serotonin uh, from epithelial cells uh, to further to uh, brain uh, functioning, to brain functioning. So, so yes, th this is a really new field. And uh, I think that more research is needed in that uh, that field, so it's it's really new, and uh, more uh, bacteria from gut should be characterized uh, until we reveal real uh, function of these bacteria in gut brain axis. But it's uh, our for future work uh, aimed uh, to, to yeah. establish this. I've also um, received a um, question from uh, Bauke Audega mm -hmm. um, because he um, was interested uh, based on your. Um, uh, presentation. Uh, what's the molecular mechanism of the relation between autoimmune diseases and gut mi microbiome? Could you tell us something more about that? Yeah, this is really simple, actually. Uh, what I said uh, uh, from in the beginning, that uh, um, colonization of uh, our gut uh, by uh, gut bacteria starting uh, uh, early at, in our life, uh, after the birth, and uh, if it's, if that's pro that process doesn't uh, occur properly, then immune system uh, doesn't uh, be, uh, cannot be formed properly. And uh, then uh, that that's why we have uh, that much autoimmune diseases because immu immune system uh, doesn't work properly because uh, of hygiene hypothesis. And we live now in a more, uh, let's say, uh, clear and sterile uh, environment. Uh, and also, uh, uh, we used a lot of uh, antibiotics and chemicals uh, early in uh, childhood, so uh, gut uh, microbiota cannot be uh, established properly uh, in, uh, in early in life. And that's why immune system uh, doesn't work properly later. And uh, for example, in multiple sclerosis uh, experiment uh, with the rats, we showed that uh, when we use antibiotics uh, during pregnancy, and during the uh, winning, winning phase of the small rats, that these rats uh, uh, can much worse uh, clinical signs for of multiple sclerosis than uh, control group, uh, pointing that really um, uh, gut microbiota is involved in the uh, development of immune system. And uh, if it, it's uh, in this biosis from the first uh, stages of our life, then uh, we have more autoimmune diseases. So mm -hmm. that's very simple, actually. Yeah, yeah. We have to learn more mechanisms staying behind, but uh, gut microbiota is definitely very important. I have one question to conclude. Um, 
because um, you started um, with uh, artisan foods and um, of course um, food is no longer um, produced in the old-fashioned way. Do you also see the risk of um, losing basically the recipes for uh, success? So are there also artisan foods disappearing that you actually would like to research here? Yes, actually, uh, the, the huge problem is that artisanal food is disappearing because we lose the diversity of these bacteria present in uh, artisanal food. And uh, the aim of our laboratory uh, for, uh, let's say, 20 years, uh, uh, since, since 20 years, uh, is uh, we collected uh, more than 4,000 lactic acid bacteria from artisanal cheeses from uh, Serbia and uh, other Western Balkan countries. Uh, and we found that these bacteria have really special uh, probiotic and technological properties. So we really need to keep artisanal products to keep the diversity of bacteria mm. that are so important yeah, for our health. And, and um, is, is there um, a countermeasure uh, that you say, okay, this is how we start doing that? Uh, is it something that you also look to the public uh, to, to um, help you in that or...? or? How would you do that? Uh, actually, we, we try we try to make uh, a starter culture for dairy food uh, that uh, can imitate those uh, artisanal starters, and uh, we also aim to make uh, probiotic uh, mix cultures uh, to 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 treat some autoimmune diseases. So that's the okay. aim of uh, our group. Okay, thanks a lot. A special question we always have um, in the interviews is. Um, What's your favorite microbe? And could you tell us a bit about that microbe? Oh, okay. Uh, our favorite uh, microbe at this moment is Turicibacter because we found that it is very interesting in the gut-brain axis. And particularly, we found it uh, related to multiple sclerosis. So I think that our work will be more continued on that uh, okay. bacteria. Well, uh, I hope so too. And um, I want to thank you for this interview. Is there anything that you would like to add? No, it's mostly Good. that, that is said already. Thank you.